it's Froggy and I'm back again with another episode of Will a Wonderful World. So let's open up the post box again. Uh, ooh, green. Ooh, but we didn't have green before. We should go with the ones that we've already had. So let's do this Lo guy siento. back. Oh, Alicia, one-armed man. <laughs> and the Fury of the Cat. Oh, these are side stories, I guess? This one branches off of that. You branch off of this. Okay. Let's start with the one-armed man. I picked up a random bottle from hundreds of bottles of fine wine in the underground wine cellar and put it in and put it on the luxurious short table in front of the old man. He nodded with approval and popped the cork. The bright red liquid was poured into an exquisite looking wine glass. It was swirling and glistening like flowing ruby. Drink it. Drink it. Drink it. I was standing next to him. Sweat was pouring out over my forehead. As soon as he drank the wine that had just been flavored by me, I would unquestionably become a murderer. I would no longer be a good Catholic. But I had no other choice. I would not let myself be tortured to death by this damned place. I especially would not let myself die without ever seeing Carlos again. He had killed so many innocent people, and I had every reason to send him to his final judgment in front of the Heavenly Father. Manigia's lips had already touched the glass, when the housekeeper knocked on the door and informed me that there was a visitor. A man with only one arm was sitting on the sofa in the living room. A couple of tall, muscular bodyguards were standing behind him, ready for instructions from their boss. I had never seen Money Gia act more like a spineless, ass-kissing weasel before. He had the most cowardly smile on his face. He seemed determined to lower himself as much as possible in front of the one ardent man. The man yawned and grabbed the bottle of flavored wine on the table. Was he going to drink it? No. No, he couldn't drink that. I stepped forward. He grabbed the bottle, emptied it with a smile on his face and forced everything gurgling down. It was already too late. The wine and cyanide mixture went down his throat and into his stomach. He suddenly stood up, with his hand grabbing at the sofa. Then he stumbled and fell. His whole body was twitching on the floor. His hand was now grabbing at his own throat. His mouth was wide open, but he couldn't breathe. The rest of the wine spilled out of the dropped bottle turning the white velvet carpet into a bright red color. The bodyguards were all panicking. Boss Ray? Boss Ray! Mr. Tough Boss Ray is... What are you waiting for? Call an ambulance! No ambulance could be faster than cyanide, though. Almost immediately, the one-armed man died. Money Gia had been sitting on the sofa as if he had been paralyzed... He kept staring at the body with an incredulous look on his face. He didn't move nor say a word until the bodyguards pointed their guns at his head. It's... it's her! That bitch did it! She poisoned the wine! They wouldn't let anyone get away at this point. They stuffed Money Gia and I into the trunk of a car. A proper greeting would be waiting for us. Alicia. Ah, oh, jeez. To the cat! My late daddy used to lecture me, saying that it was dangerous for us to have a predictable daily routine, as the humans might be able to track our activities. Despite that, I had developed a habit of visiting the fresh seafood store at the corner of the street every day at noon. Today, as usual, I was tank shopping, the tanks in the lobby, pondering the most important question to me. What was for lunch? The fish in the left tank were all too big. The fish in the tank next to my feet looked delicious. But there were only six of them left, and it would be too obvious if I stole one. I decided that I would go with the tank on the top right corner. No one would notice if one fish was missing, as there were so many in it. And they had fewer bones, too. Most importantly, they were really fresh. I hunched my back and was about to jump up when my ears picked up a tiny noise behind me. The owner had just come into the lobby from the back. 
I quickly hid behind a tank and watched as he opened the roller door, washed the ground from in front of the entrance, and sat down to wait for the first order of the day. The owner had blonde hair and blue eyes, which was not common in this city. The other humans called him Alex. Alex. Have we heard of Alex before? I sneaked up to the door and meowed softly, pretending that I had just arrived. Following the principle of not trusting humans, I would never intentionally expose my tracks to humans. Still, sometimes I wondered if I needed to be so careful around these humans whose every move was always so predictable. Take this guy, for instance. I was sure that he would not chase me off. Hey! Here you are! Just wait there for a second. A couple of minutes later, he placed a glass in front of me and poured me half a glass of milk. Oh, it smelled so good. Milk is truly Cat's best friend. And then I realized I wouldn't be getting any fish today. I meowed at the owner with my cutest expression. I want a full glass. He scratched his chin, seemed to understand something, and went to go grab something from the cabinet. Then he put a few pieces of dried fish in front of me. Ew. After Daddy had passed away, I spent a whole month eating the dried fish that we had saved together. Ever since then, even the sight of dried fish had been enough to make me sick. He pet me on the head. In the end, as a stray cat, I did not have the luxury to be picky about food. Besides, as long as I got along with this human, I could come back often and steal more fresh fish. So I bent my neck and rubbed my head against his hand, pretending to be a docile little kitty, and meowed happily at him. For the record, I was not actually happy. I was licking the milk with my head down when a strong smell of alcohol almost choked me. Tee! Someone spat his phlegm into the nearest fish tank. Pheh, here comes trouble. A man with black hair stood in front of the shop. A half-empty beer bottle was dangling from his hand, making a splashing sound. His eyes were wandering and unfocused. I recognized him. He lived in the small house that was at the highest one of the community in the hills. Oh, that's what's his face is dad. I hate this guy. Kill him. Both his wife and his son had blonde hair and blue eyes. Oh, Alex! Of course it's Alex. They were much better looking than him. Although I had not seen them for a while, I heard that the wife had committed suicide. Oh. The owner's eyes stayed fixated on his newspaper, but his hands were trembling. Well, as far as I knew, the relationship between the owner and the other guy's family had been complicated, to say the least. The black-haired man's blonde wife had often been seen hanging out with the owner in a very intimate way. Whenever the neighbors nearby saw them together, they would gossip about it. The owner was very concerned, but the woman didn't seem to care at all. Once I had... Once I heard some humans chatting that the blonde woman had some kind of illness. What kind of illness would make people behave like that? I couldn't understand. The man had always been very nice to his wife. But the wife was a dragon lady. Not only did she have an affair, she would even beat up her husband and her son. Whoa! Once I even heard her calling her own son a bastard. He looked so much like her, how could he not be her own son? Well, it was terrible. As the days went by, the man began to lose his spirit too, and he wouldn't go anywhere without alcohol. But the one who had suffered the most must be the little boy. He was so pretty and looked nothing like the other kids, so no other children would play with him. Sometimes I would run into the boy, and if I had nothing else to do, I'd play with him for a little while. If he happened to have some change on him, he would even buy me some milk. Compared to his parents, that kid was almost like an angel with catnip. Anyway, it was not a normal family. The man stared at the owner for a while, his mouth squeezed out a pssst. Then his eyes turned to me. He crouched down and knocked over the glass. All of the milk spilled out. Even Some even got on my paws. It wasn't the first time this had happened, but the owner still didn't move at all, as if it had nothing to do with him. Damn you, stupid human. How dare you interrupt my meal? You wait there. 
I stared at the stone-faced man, waving my fist. I swear I'm going to stuff dead rats into your bed tonight. Spotty. Okay. Uh... Knocked over the glass. Forced everything down, gurgling. Try that. Swap everything. He put down the bottle. And then he spoke to me in his drunken voice. I have... I have won the lottery. He took another chug of the beer. I have won a million won. Burp. I'm going to get my son back. Sure, sure, you won a million won. What the cat hell did it have anything to do with me? I lowered my head and continued with my milk, ignoring the boring human. The exquisite-looking glass was smashed into pieces near my feet. The bodyguards of the one-armed man immediately raised their guns in case I tried to do something to their boss. The one-armed man himself was sitting calmly on the sofa as if he was just waiting for a show. The old man looked at one the one-armed man nervously and then looked back at me. He was still confused. Even though I hadn't gone even though it hadn't gone as planned, I couldn't get up now. Go to hell, you dirty old monster! I bent down and picked up the largest piece of glass. But my right hand was somehow blown into pieces right before my very eyes. Ooh, okay, not good. And then I felt more bullets hitting me in the chest. Shoulders, stomach, legs. I could feel the white velvet carpet touching my face. It felt so soft. Slowly, it had turned to a bright red. Okay, well, uh, yeah, we will, we will retry. Oh no, that's gonna kill you too. Let's try that. The yellow beer and the white milk mixed together and turned into a disgusting color. How dare you, you lousy loser! That was my lunch! I stared at the stone-faced man, waving my fist. You just wait. I swear I'm going to stuff dead rats into your bed tonight. The stone-faced man, however, seemed to have ignored all of my threats. He stood back up happily, turned away, and walked into the nearest nearby lottery place. Meow? Wait. This new milk cocktail seemed to have an extraordinary scent. I, being the bravest soul in this whole universe, drank the milk that looked like it was going to give me diarrhea. As a result, I did get diarrhea in the evening. What was worse is it smelled absolutely horrible. Damn you, human! Ugh. I kept swallowing the flavored wine down my throat. I would rather drink the poisonous wine myself then have some innocent bystander die because of me. The bottle smashed into pieces on the floor as a strange sensation took over my body. I could not breathe. My mouth was wide open. I grabbed at my throat with both of my hands and fell to the floor. My whole body was twitching. As I gradually lost consciousness, I heard a couple of gunshots. The old man fell in front of my face. His eyes were wide open and full of shock. Blood was oozing out of his forehead, turning the white velvet carpet to a bright red color. <laughs> Even though things had not gone as planned, I could die without regrets now. You dirty old monster. I would haunt you on your way to hell. Another bad. Okay. This one doesn't say that he's drinking it, so no poison, maybe. The one-armed man put down the wine glass, picked up the phone, handed to him by the scar-faced henchman. It seemed that something more urgent had come up, and the gang left the mansion immediately. 
As soon as he had sent them away, the old man changed into his normal self and smashed the remaining bottle of wine on the table. Damn you, Raylan, how dare you belittle me like this? One day you'll pay for it. The wine was turning the white velvet carpet into a bright red color. I had mixed all of the poison into that bottle. What was I supposed to do without it? See and bad. Shove everything over to your side then, maybe. He put down the bottle. And then he spoke to me in his drunken voice. I have, I have won the lottery. I took another tug of beer. I have won a million won. I'm going to get my son back. I looked at the spilled milk, feeling irritated. What the cat hell did it have anything to do with me? I waved my fist at the stone-faced man. You just wait. I swear I'm going to stuff dead rats into your bed tonight. Damn you, human. I'm assuming I can't put anything down here at all. Or above it. Everything on her side, maybe. He looked at me. I looked right back at him. We stared at each other with our different sized eyes. Of course, I had the bigger eyes. At a moment like this, I had to overpower him with my fearlessness. However, I quietly moved the milk glass behind me a little. After the standoff had lasted for a while, he stood back up, defeated. He turned away and walked into the nearby lottery place. Look, I won! Stupid human. Okay, well that's a good ending for you. So we're gonna leave you with nothing. Um... The flavored wine kept being forced down my throat. As soon as the one-armed man let go of my neck, a strange sensation took over my body. I could not breathe. My mouth was wide open. I grabbed at my throat with both of my hands and fell to the floor. My whole body was twitching. As I gradually lost consciousness, I heard a couple of gunshots. The old man fell in front of my face, his eyes wide open and full of shock. Blood was oozing out of his forehead, turning the white velvet carpet red. Ha ha ha. And he's dead. Still bad. Let's see. Okay, let's uh, go over the... Okay, so we can't, no matter what combination I do of having everything on her side, it's never gonna give me the what I need. So let's try this. Okay, 
There, something new, finally. The exquisite looking glass was smashed into pieces near my feet. The one-armed man stared at me with a smile and emptied everything in the bottle onto the floor. The wine was turning the white velvet carpet to a bright red color. The red kept spreading, almost touching my feet. I wanted to step back, but I was paralyzed by his stare. I couldn't move my body even one inch. The old man came around after a little while. You. Did you poison the wine, you dirty bitch? To prove his innocence in front of the one-armed man, he grabbed a fork from the dessert tray and charged towards me in a rage. No. No. You are the one that should be dead, not me, not now! I picked up the largest piece of glass from the floor and stabbed the scumbag. He stabbed the fork into my shoulder, but I had pushed the glass into his heart. The old man made a stifled sound. He stared at me with death in his eyes. He probably had never imagined that one day he would die at the hands of one of his lab rats. I realized that nothing mattered now. I knew I wouldn't be able to survive today. Heavenly Father, forgive me. I pulled the fork out of my shoulder and stabbed it towards my own neck. I felt it touching the skin and flesh on my neck. I needed to push a little harder to pierce my skin and force it into my artery. My right hand was trembling. My eyes were watering up. I had to use my left hand to support the other one. You must be alive to enjoy life. There's no need to die in a hurry. The fork was gone from my hand. The one-armed man flung his coat over my shoulder, still smiling. Then he held my freezing, trembling hands in his one big palm. I could not remember the last time that I had felt such warmth. I broke down, sobbing uncontrollably. Oh. Okay. I guess this doesn't matter. All right, well, great. Uh, we finally passed it with two S's. So I think I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos from me, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.